generation. How many of you know that we are the rapture generation? A lot of people aren't aware of that. Most folks in this church are, but a lot of people aren't aware of it. Well, what is the rapture? Well, the definition of that word means a snatching away. A snatching away. Snatching away of what? Of the church of Jesus Christ. And my dear people, all the prophecies have been fulfilled all the way up to the rapture of the church. There is literally nothing to be fulfilled outside of, outside of the signing of the peace agreement with Israel, which is in negotiations this very moment. So I'm going to show you through the Word of God how we are not only the rapture generation, I'm going to show you this evening exactly kind of what's going on on the news. When you go home, you'll see this. When you can open up the book of Revelations and see the 6 o'clock news, you know the things are pretty close. So we're going to show you some of these things tonight. Amen? Hallelujah. Also, I'm going to explain to you what to expect when we're raptured, what your body's going to go through, and things of this nature. So, if you're new tonight, just kind of go with the flow. Amen? Amen. Then you say, the flow of what? Well, the flow of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Again, the title of the text is The Raptured Generation. A lot of people don't realize that there are actually, there are actually two stages or, or phases, if you like, uh, concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ. To understand the Word of God, you must realize that there are two future comings of our Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, how can that be? I've only heard of the second coming. That's right. The first coming is the rapture of the church, which we'll show you through the Word of God tonight. The rapture of the church. This is where Jesus Christ Himself is coming for His church. Now, who is His church? Raise your hand, church. Are you His church? You better believe it. All right. He's coming for His church, and we meet Him in the air, in the clouds. 1 Thessalonians 4.17. All right. The second coming, or the return of Jesus Christ, is with His saints. Who's His saints? That's us. That is seven years after the rapture, during, or I mean after the tribulation hour, at the battle of Armageddon where Jesus' feet literally touched down at the Mount of Olives. That's Revelation 19.11 and Zechariah 14.4. Now, my dear people, the rapture of the church is very, very near on God's calendar. Yes, the Word of God says no man knows the hour. That's right, no man does. Amen? Hallelujah. But I can tell you that the Word of God plainly says that we will know the times and the seasons and the generation. And my dear people, we are the rapture generation. We are the rapture generation. So the rapture could happen at any given moment, at any given time. It could happen this very night. And people need to wake up. They are preaching this all over the world. And they better wake up because it could happen at any moment because there's nothing left to be fulfilled. Amen? Amen. Outside of the signing of the peace, peace agreement, I want to show you in the book of Revelation where we're at concerning that. Now, I want to point out to you that the rapture is the literal, visible, we'll see it, bodily return of Jesus Christ to meet the born-again believers in the air. I'm going to explain to you tonight, to the best of my ability, the help of the Holy Spirit here, what to expect and what to look forward to. If you turn with me, please, to the book of Acts, chapter 1. The book of Acts, chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Acts, chapter 1. And we're going to begin with verse 6. What we have in the book of Acts, beginning with verse 6, we have Jesus, and He is speaking to the disciples. How many of you know the word disciples? So He's talking to us too, isn't He? Jesus speaking to the disciples, beginning with verse 6. And he says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea, in Samaria, and, in all, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Verse 9. 
And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. You notice that there? He was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, how did Jesus leave? He went up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Those, of course, were angels. Verse 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. So what's he saying there? Well, he's saying there in verse 11, that the same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner. So in other words, when he returns, he shall return just exactly as he left in the clouds, in the air. Instead of going up, he will come down. And in in other words, it is in like manner. Okay? So Jesus, when he went up, had a new resurrected body of flesh and bones. How many of you know that? Jesus was resurrected. Amen? Okay. Now, he had a new resurrected body of flesh and bones. You say, well, why am I telling you this? Because, my dear people, we're going to have a resurrected body of flesh and bones also. Amen? All right. Now, if you would turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. Because, you see, Jesus, he could be seen... He could be touched and he could even eat food. How many of you know that? He could be seen, he could be touched, and he could even eat food. Now, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, beginning with verse 36, this is after the resurrection. Jesus is standing in the midst of his disciples again. And as he's he's speaking, and as they thus spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, speaking about the disciples, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Because you see, Jesus had appeared after the resurrection. You still with me? He had been resurrected, and here he was in flesh and bone. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet. There was a, she showed him the holes in his hands and in his feet. That it is I myself. Then Jesus said, Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. So well, there we have the Lord Jesus Christ in his new resurrected body of flesh and bone. He could be seen, he could be touched, and he even ate some broiled fish. You say, well, why are you telling me that? Because you're going to be exactly the same. You better believe it. He was the first of the born-again believers. He was the first of the resurrected Hallelujah. And we are the second and the third and the fourth and right on down the line. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So you see, when Jesus Christ returns in the clouds, all believers, how many of them? All. All. How many of you know that all means all? All believers, dead and living, will also be taken bodily to meet him in the air. We will leave just like Jesus left bodily and we will meet Jesus Christ in the air in the clouds. We will be changed as this mortal body that we have puts on immortality and is transformed to be just like the body of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to show you some more things here. I'm going to give you a few scripture references if you want to write these down. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, the Word of God says, When He shall appear, we shall be like Him. Glory be to God. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. The Word of God says in Psalm 17, 15, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. Glory be to God. In other words, we are going to be satisfied with our new body. Amen? Amen? 
We're going to be satisfied with our new body. You say, well, Ron, how come you're telling me all these things? Because, my dear people, the rapture is close. It is close and you need to wake up. People need to wake up. Now, if you turn with me, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Thank you, Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, (coughs) Paul the Apostle is going to show us some things here through the Word of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 49, if you have a pencil, you may want to underline or circle some things here. Because Paul the Apostle is going to begin to show us a mystery. How many of you like mysteries? Amen? Well, Paul the Apostle here is going to show us a mystery that's contained within the Word of God. Verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthly... Now, who's he talking to there? He's talking... Who's we? Us. He's saying the church. As we have borne the image of the earthly... Are we not on the earth? We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. You see that there? We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So in other words, we have borne the image of the earthly, and we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Why? Because it's a spiritual kingdom, my dear people. How many of you know that the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom? Amen. Now we get into the meat of this. Verse 51. Paul the Apostle is beginning to show us a mystery. Behold, he says, I show you a mystery. We. Who? We. Us. Shall not all sleep. In other words, we're not going to die. We shall not all sleep. We're not going to die. But we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed. We're not going to die. We're going to be changed. Bodily transformed, if you like. Just like Jesus. Okay. So in other words, in verse 51 we say, We shall not all sleep or die, but we shall all be changed. Okay. Now keep reading. Verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye... At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Now let me back that up and break that down for you. The first mystery. The dead shall be raised. The dead shall be raised. How many of you know that Jesus was raised from the dead? How many of you do know that many, many people have already been raised from the dead? Yeah. The very day that He was resurrected. I'll show you this real quick. If you turn to real quickly to Matthew 27, verse 50. Then we'll come back to 1 Corinthians. Matthew 27, verse 50. A lot of people say, well, I never saw that. That's because you don't read your Bible. (laughs) Isn't that right? Hallelujah. In Matthew 27, verse 50, the Word of God says, this is where... Y'all got it? Matthew 27, verse 50. Jesus, when He had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Okay? Verse 52. And the graves were opened. You see that sentence there? And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after His resurrection. You see that there? After His resurrection, and went into the holy city and appeared appeared unto many. Why is that? For a witness, my dear people. People have already been raised from the dead. They walk right into town. Can you imagine walking into town and saying, Oh my God, there's Grandma. Can you imagine that? Or there's Uncle Harry. (laughs) Can you imagine that? My dear people, why? Because these people had put on their resurrected body 
come up out of the grave and walk right into town. Amen? So you see, that's why that it happened. To show us an example. So you see, and the first mystery is the dead shall be raised. This is, we have this example of graves being opened after His resurrection. In other words, the, the dead, or the, the, they talk about sleep, were raised. So what's the second mystery? Well, if we go back to 1 Corinthians again, 15. Thank you, Jesus. And in verse 51... The Word of God says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We're not going to all sleep or not die. Christians that are living during the rapture generation, how many of you know we are in the rapture generation, are not all going to die. In other words, we are not going to taste death. They are going to be bodily resurrected. Raptured. So what is the third ministry? Mystery, verse 51. But we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed. Who? Us. We shall all be changed. When? At the rapture. Now, I'm going to give you a few scripture references here. In 1 John 3, 2, the Word of God says, When He shall appear, we shall be like Him. In other words, when He shall appear in the clouds, we shall be like Him. Him. How many of you know that three raptures have already taken place? Three have already taken place. In Hebrews 11.5, the Word of God says, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. You can read that story in Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. So the first rapture we have is the rapture of Enoch. Then the second one we have the rapture of Elijah. In 2 Kings 2.1, the Word of God says, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elisha into heaven by a whirlwind, which happened. And then, of course, the third rapture, we just read it, was the rapture of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wasn't He taken up into heaven? In first, uh, I mean, Acts 1, 9, the Word of God says, He was taken up, and a cloud received Him out of their sight. Alright, you still with me? Alright. So right there are three raptures. Or taking, or snatching away, if you like. Bodily, literal, body, physical people. Enoch, Elisha, and Jesus Christ were all literally, physically, and bodily raptured. And of course, what is the fourth mystery? Verse 52, we shall be changed. Now, that word be changed is the Greek word alasso. It's A-double-L-A-double-S-O. And it literally means to be transformed. We will be transformed. All born-again believers will be transformed in body and nature into glorified bodies that are suited for the eternal, spiritual, incorruptible realm in which God, our Father, dwells. Hallelujah. You see, the Lord, our God, our Father, transforms us into the exact likeness of His glorified Son, Jesus Christ. Now, dear people, you have to have a lot of faith in the resurrection or Christianity is dead. Anybody can die on the cross, but not everybody can be raised from the dead. They had two thieves that hung on both sides of Jesus Christ and they all died out on the cross. That wasn't the victory. The victory was raised from the dead. Can you see that? Glory be to God. Amen. You see... Of course, the fifth mystery was the fifth mystery in verse 52 is it says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. That's how quick this will happen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Now, back home, I call that a New York second. <laughs> That's fast. <laughs> if you've ever been to New York, New York is fast. We call that a New York second. That's fast. Twinkling of an eye. So you see, my dear people, the rapture of the church will happen so suddenly it will literally be a flash of a second. Every living believer, believer now, on the earth will be gone. The resurrected Lord Jesus is the measure of our future existence. He is our example. How many of you know that He is our example in all things? Okay. He is our example in all things. Not only when He was on the earth, but also in His resurrection and also... In heaven. In New Jerusalem. 
To give you some of these examples, you might, might want to write these scriptures down. In Luke 24, 31, Jesus could appear and disappear at will. In John 20, verse 19, He could go and move through solid walls. This is after His resurrection. In Matthew 28, 9, He could be seen and felt after His resurrection. He was seen by over 500 people at once after His resurrection. How many of you know that? 1 Corinthians 15, verses 4 through 6. He was seen by over 500 people at once after His resurrection. Matter of fact, we're right here in 1 Corinthians. I'll show that to you. In 1 Corinthians uh, 15, beginning with verse 4, you're just the next page over from where you're at. It should be. The Word of God says, And He was buried, and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And He was seen of Cephas, and of the twelve, meaning the disciples. And after that, He was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present to but some, of course, are falling asleep, or in other words, some have died. So you see, there's 500 witnesses that witnessed him walking about after the resurrection. Okay? Amen. Well, you say, well, why was that? So we have a witness. Something like witnesses, is there? Amen? Hallelujah. Well, my dear people, then the Word of God says in... Uh, we're mad here. Hallelujah. Oh, well, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Luke 24, verse 41... As we, we read, he could eat food. He could eat food. Thank God for that. Of course, i got trifles up there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and in Luke 24, 30, Jesus could be recognized in his glorified body. And you say, well, why is that important? Listen to now. If Jesus could be recognized in his glorified body, you know what that tells you? We will look the same in heaven as we look on the earth. You understand that? If they can recognize Jesus, they'll recognize us. We're going to look the same, people. You better believe it. And in Revelation 21, 4, the Word of God tells us that our resurrected bodies will no longer experience death, aging, crying, mourning, sorrow, or pain. Amen. Amen. And we have a lot to work, look forward to. Amen. I like that part, of, part about aging. I really think we're going to have a more of a medium age. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me ask you something tonight. Are you ready? Are you ready? You better believe it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, my dear people, He is coming. I'm telling you, He's coming soon. He's coming soon. And we need to get ready. Now, I'm going to show you some scriptures here. If you would turn with me, please, to 1 Thessalonians. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> In 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, Beginning with verse 16, we have the rapture of the church. First Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verses 16. The Word of God says, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven. Isn't He coming back the same way He went up? Amen. With a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's the dead in Christ, those that are asleep. Verse 17, Then we which are alive... How many live ones we got in here tonight? Are you alive tonight? Praise God. <clears throat> and remain... We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them... Who? The dead in Christ. In the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. I want you to make a note of that. In the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18 says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So you see, we are caught up alive in the air to be with the Lord. Amen? That's the rapture. That's the literal rapture. Okay. Now, verse 18 says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. What words? Well, when the Bible was translated, how many of you know that the, 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 the Word of God was written in letters and parchments and so forth? It was not written by verse and chapters. It was put in the verse and chapters so that we can find out where we're at in the Bible to study it and to learn it. All right, but when it was written, it was written in letters. And so chapter 5 is actually a continuation, if you like, of chapter 4. And that's the reason why verse 18 says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Then it says, chapter 5, verse 1, 
But of the times and the seasons, brethren... Who's he talking to there? He's talking to the church, is he not? Ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord... How many of you know what the day of the Lord is? That's the last days. How many of you know that we are in the last days? Even the world's beginning to re recognize that we are in the last days. They know something's going on, they just don't know what. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now I want you to pay attention here to verse 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety. What are they saying all over the earth today? Peace and safety. Peace and safety. What's going on in the world? They are disarming. Disarming. Speaking peace. Speaking safety. Disarming. Disarming. On this morning's news... On this morning's news, it was announced that they are closing in America 129 more military bases. Peace and safety. Peace and safety. For when they shall say, peace and safety. Well, who else is saying peace and safety? Israel. Israel with the Arab nations. How many of you know that Israel has never, ever been at peace? It's never been at peace. Did you know that? It's been in captivity. It was in captivity all the way back to 608 B.C. There was no Israel. There was just the children of God. There was no Israel until May the 14th, 1948. Israel as a state did not exist. There was no Israel. It was in captivity after captivity after captivity. The peoples, it was a miracle of God, if you think about it, that, the, that those tribes stayed together as a nation. Although they were scattered. So May 14, 1948, they become a nation. Okay? So, when they shall say peace and safety. So what are they talking about now? Peace and safety. They're talking about the peace agreement. Then sudden destruction cometh upon them. You see that word them? Who's it talking about there? It's talking about Israel. Israel. The Bible is totally centered around Israel. How many of you know that? Yes. Okay. Then sudden destruction come up upon them, speaking about Israel, as travail upon a woman. How many of you know that when travail comes upon a woman with a child, it's not going to stop? It's not going to stop? With, it says, as travail upon a woman with, uh, with child, and they shall not escape. Then verse 4, But ye, brethren, speaking to the church again, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all to the children of light and the children of the day. And you are not of the night nor of darkness. Why? Because we've been born again. We know the truth. Therefore, let us not sleep or do as do others, but let us watch and be sober. In other words, let us watch and pray. And for they that sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, speaking to the church, who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet of love, hope, and salvation. And verse 9, very important sentence. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Amen. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Who? The church of Jesus Christ. He has not appointed the church to wrath. What's that tell you? My dear people, the church is not going to go through the tribulation hour. Why? Because we are not subject to wrath. Okay, now I want to show you something here. Now, let's keep going here. Thank you, Jesus. The church of Jesus Christ will be raptured before God deals with Israel. How many of you know that? Now, verse 9 tells us that God hath not appointed us to wrath. Now, 